Hi, welcome back to another video. Uh, this one I wanted to do a follow-up on the review of Tester's Dull Coat. If you recall, I did a video a couple weeks back maybe where I was taking a look at Tester's Dull Coat versus um, I, I think, uh, oh gosh, what is it, Painter's Touch? taking a look here, Rust-Oleum's uh, matte clear coat. And I was pretty uh, impressed with Tester's ability to cover a glossy finish with a, a pretty dull appearance, really gave a very matte coverage, and I wanted to take a look at it against Army Painter's matte clear coat. I finally picked up a can of Army Painter's matte clear coat, and I uh, got another can of Tester's because I had used it up, and so I've given them a side-by-side -side comparison on a couple pieces to really take a look at how they stack up. So first, my first experiment was with, um, let me just make sure, here we go. Um, my first experiment was with the fuel depots, which I just showed you in a previous video. Um, on these, I uh, basically uh, painted them, then I dipped them in the Quick Shade Strong Tone, which is a very dark, dark, dark brown, gray, uh, black. Uh, some people had questioned in the past on one of the comments on the videos whether it's just black or whether it has any brown in it. It definitely has brown in it. There's uh, no doubt in my mind, but it's almost black. Any case, dip those, uh, then dry brush them, and then um, actually first I clear coated them with the testers and the army painter, and then I dry brushed over that because I figured with the um, matte covering of it, the uh, paint would adhere to it a little bit better for dry brushing because it's going to give it a rougher texture so the paint would come off the brush a little bit easier. So taking a look at it, um, so this is the army painter's pieces. And actually, um, and I'll have to see when I process this video, it may look a little shinier in the video than it actually does in real life. One of the key areas where the um, matte clear coat was most important is going to be at the intersections of these nubs on the barrels because here's where the um, quick shade pooled the heaviest, which is, you know, its intended effect to highlight those edges and also was areas that received very little dry brushing. So I'm looking for the best coverage in those spots. And overall, I'd say the Army Painter uh, gave a very good coverage. I'm going to have to say that. I, uh, compared to the Krylon, for instance, there's absolutely no competition. The Army Painter is uh, very good matte coverage. And then I, of course, did the um, testers on the same style piece, same kind of... Um, paint effects, same style, same technique, same stage of uh, application. And again, this looks a little bit shinier, at least in the viewfinder, than it does in real life. But I'll be honest with you, side by side on the tabletop, um, I cannot tell the difference between these two pieces in terms of the clear coat coverage on them. Uh, I really can't. In fact, I had to mark one on the bottom with an A to denote that it was the Army Painter because I, you know, otherwise I might not be able to tell. So I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that um, Army Painter is at least comparable to or as good as Tester's Dull Coat. I would say that the difference in their quality is vastly offset by the difference in their price. Uh, to give you a little sense, um, the Army Painter can comes in a 400 milliliter can, 400 milliliters, and of course Testers comes in a three ounce can, so I had to do a little conversion, looked online. This is equal to 13 and a half ounces. So that is roughly four Testers dull coat cans, four. The um, cost for an Army Painter can is about $9, Testers about four. So really, um, you know, the equivalent in Testers coverage for this can is going to be about over four cans, four and a half cans are about $15. It's about twice as expensive as the Army Painter, and I definitely don't think you're getting twice the improved quality out of the testers as you are out of the Army Painter matte clear coat. I did a second piece just to double check, and this uh, turned out a little more interesting. I um, took uh, these two wall sections, which I'm going to discuss in a later video, and I um, these are um, built out of Herstarts blocks. I painted them, and then because the Herstarts blocks tend to, you know, the risk is always when you work with plaster is chipping, and I thought, let's try giving them a heavy coverage protective coat. So I sprayed them with Painter's Touch gloss clear coat first, and I gave them um, a very heavy coat. Well, I wouldn't say very heavy coat of them, but I gave them a pretty solid coat of that just to give it a little protection. And then I gave one, the Tester's Dull Coat spray on it. 
and the other I gave the Army Painters spray on it. And I have to say, for some reason, they um, ended up a bit more glossy than um, what I've seen in the past on some of the other test pieces that I've done with the Tester's Dull Coat. Um, and I'm wondering if it's because, you know, in, in the past I've, t I've technically painted over those gloss coats uh, a little bit before applying, or I should say, after applying the matte clear coat, I have then subsequently painted over those spots. And so that probably helped to mute some of the residual gloss. When you look at these pieces, there is a little bit of a gloss still showing on them. Uh, so they're not completely flat, but having said that, the Army Painter is no more glossy than the Testers is. So I give them both equal you know, weight in terms of how well they've covered the gloss coating, um, but it's not quite as flat as I had hoped, which I was a little surprised because the um, Quick Shade produces uh, you know, a very high gloss finish and it seems to cover the Quick Shade a little bit better, which is an interesting uh, comment now that I'm thinking about it, because perhaps the Quick Shade is a little bit more receptive to a matte clear coat than, say, the gloss clear coat from Painter's Touch, you know, which is a common Home Depot brand. So, something to keep in mind there, um, but in any case, they still equal in terms of their coverage and their quality, and so therefore, I would say I'm going to have to recommend Army Painter if anybody's looking out there for a clear coat. It's going to be the one that I recommend in the future if you're looking to give a dull finish to miniatures. Hope you found this useful. I'll talk to you soon.